Hey everyone, producer Dave here. Uh, check out our other podcasts. We have The Plex, our flagship show, which is a weekly news roundup. We have Local Love, which is interviews with local Bay Area bands. Uh, speaking of local, we also have Down Ballot, which is our Bay Area local news podcast. And we have How the Tech Are You, which is obviously a tech podcast. Enjoy the show. Disregard females and acquire currency. I am white. I got everything I need No one clutches the purses when they're in a room alone with me And I can drive through any neighborhood I please At any hour, and the police don't do a thing So if I see a penny on the ground I leave it alone and fucking flip it I'm a straight white male in America I've got everything I need I'm a guy getting paid more than a girl with a degree I can walk down the streets after dark, no one wants to rape me I can get a girl pregnant and just as easily flee Like my straight white male dad did to me so if I see a penny on the ground, I leave it alone and fucking flip it. I'm a straight white male in America. I've got all the luck I need. I'm a pile of broken mirrors and I'm walking under letters and I'm feeling tons of salt, but to me that doesn't matter because my skin and my gender and my orientation, the best things to have if you live in this nation, recommend it highly. Yes, I recommend it highly So if I see a penny on the ground I leave it alone and fucking flip it I'm a straight white male in America I've got all the luck I need Shit's gonna work out for me Cause I'm a straight white male in America I've got all the luck I need all right, everybody, welcome to Lo- no, not welcome to Local Love. Welcome to the Intellectual Dollar <laughs> Tree. We do the show live every Wednesday, 7 p.m. Pacific, right here on Twitch. That's twitch.tv slash Echoplex Media. Um, and simulcasting to other places that do not matter and that we may eventually get kicked off of. I'm producer Dave, and you can find me on Grinder and possibly late at night during red light. If you find me on Grinder, I might be checking my Grinder while I'm supposed to be doing the show and say hi to you. <laughs> And I'm HK Perrin, and if you want to find me around the internet, you can do that at Mastodon, at hperrin at port87.social, and you can also do that in the Twitch chat, where my name is Silfweed. Hell yeah. <clears throat> well, you heard the disregard females acquire currency, uh, the, the sound <laughs> drop before the show started, so I bet you can guess what this is going to be about. Uh, something about incels. Yeah, um, the, the, this is uh, Andrew Gold, who we found because uh, he's an idiot, and uh, mostly he was, uh, we found him through uh, like Scientology stuff, and he decided that he had reached sort of the peak of his possible popularity covering cults and like gossip, and so he decided to become part of the intellectual dark web, and when you're part of the intellectual dark web, you're really concerned about dudes not getting laid, because I mean, you got to show some concern for your audience. And, uh, well, this is, I don't know who James Bloodworth is, but, uh, the, here's the, here's the Chiron for the video. It seems wonderful. Sexless men are scared to offend. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. So one in three men is now sexless. That's actually not sexless men. That's actually not too bad. That's such a weird way to put it. Sexless men. That means two thirds of men are getting laid like on the regular. That's pretty good. <laughs> That's pretty good. Anyway, let's go. And I'm sorry. There's been apparently a rise in like sexlessness. But the problem is not that they're overstepping people's boundaries. The problem is that they're not taking any action at all in the first place because they're like almost ashamed of their masculinity, ashamed of offending someone. <laughs> this is gonna be fucking terrible. Are, are getting 80% of the dates. A lot of men aren't doing very well. A lot of people don't know how to present themselves necessarily well online. So you have someone who, who may have a lot of great qualities, but they're, they're putting these pictures um, up on on the internet, you know, and it looks like they're living in like a, a dustbin. No one is kind of teaching that stuff to, to young men. 
Tell me what you were like as a 17 to 23 year old at university with regards to sex. Uh, I didn't go to university till I was 23, but in the years between 17 and 23, I was not in education. I was quite reclusive. Uh, I smoked too much cannabis, stayed in the house a lot, lived in. Yeah, but there's there's some girls that like that. They're like, oh shit, you just want to sit around and smoke weed and watch fucking reality TV. Let's party. Like, the, the, that's whatever. There's no problem here so far. Also, I don't believe in smoking too much cannabis. In the countryside with my grandmother, had a small circle of friends, and therefore, as you can probably uh, guess from the from all of those things, my dating life wasn't exactly um, you know popping off. It was uh, I was I think I, I had a girlfriend at sixteen, and then spent the next six and a half years single. Okay, yeah, I had a this. I read I read you talking about that time as sort of like a, a, an arid moment for you. Six and a half years. That, 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 and that means he that had universe. another girlfriend at twenty two. That's not unusual. Yeah, because he did, he said single, not that he wasn't dating. You know what I'm saying? But I mean, like, even if you're not dating, that's not un like you're a kid. That's right. not unusual. Yeah, I mean, when I was when I was between the ages of 17 and 22, they needed to put me in horny jail. <laughs> like, if you make it to 30 and you haven't had a girlfriend, then now it's like unusual territory supposed to be happening and there was so much pressure then and i think i'm quite like a fun chatty person and i really struggled as well oh um, women don't like you andrew i'm stunned that brought about a lot of shame as well because you're supposed to be at university meeting loads of women and all these things are supposed to be happening but i had friends who were also going through the same thing so what does that say to you about the young dating scene uh so i mean I think my problem was slightly different to that in that I just didn't leave the house a lot. And, you know, if you don't go out a lot, I mean, the same thing happens to a lot of people during lockdown. Your social skills, skills kind of atrophy mm. uh, just from not using them. Then when you go out, you can make kind of a lot of social faux pas. And you don't really know how to behave in a regular situation, let alone when you're asking somebody out. Um, I think university, I think... Yeah, you could, I think it can be even worse for you when you go into that environment like university. So wait, did he just say that You're during lockdown, it, it was usual to just lose your social skills and, and not know how to talk to people afterward? I don't think that's true. I mean, mine needed a bit of a break, if I'm going to be completely honest. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to see some, uh, some sources cited on, on that claim, because that's, that's a pretty wild claim. Yeah, I mean, I could see maybe if people who I could see maybe it having negative impacts on people who already had a tough time socializing and maybe were just entering their 20s. You know what I'm saying? Like that. Okay. Would, but like every like he didn't like qualify it in any sort of like meaningful way or at all, actually. So but I mean, yeah. But also, maybe, like what exactly does he mean by lockdown? Because there was no part of the country where there were actual lockdowns. Yeah. So like lockdown has a a very different meaning when we're talking about what happened in the US. Right. And to be fair, they they appear to be in the UK and I don't know exactly what the restrictions were in the UK, okay. but I don't think there were police guarding everyone's door not letting them ride their their bicycle in the UK either. Yeah. <laughs> to be living this certain lifestyle you're supposed to be experimenting you're supposed to be kind of sleeping around and if you don't know how to kind of conduct yourself um how to ask somebody out if you're not very assertive naturally it doesn't feel like there's really if you don't have a, a father figure maybe can we pause it for a second here to. too because he's um that is something that bugs me when someone says like you're supposed to be experimenting and sleeping around like you're not supposed to be doing anything like there's no there's no like mandate or requirement or even like recommended behavior. I mean, I guess it wouldn't be recommended to like sleep with everyone unprotected. Uh, you guess like you, you you might catch something and that would not be good. But like there's no supposed to when it comes to like like dating and like there's you're not supposed to start dating at a specific age or like supposed to be sleeping around at a specific age they also they like, act like this is like new or whatever <clears throat> i think the only thing that's new and i think we've gone over this before but the only thing that's new is the young men who were having a hard or are having a hard time meeting partners 
they're they like now can all kind of talk to each other right because they have the internet and they might be in a game chat or on reddit or on reddit or on reddit or on 4chan <laughs> or on reddit and <clears throat> but if you think back just think about think about all the like songs from the 50s and 60s about young men not being able to find a girlfriend like there's just so much music about like the girl I want do- it doesn't like me back and all there's it's it's like an, such an old theme in like art and music that there's this isn't new it's just that it's <clears throat> I think like the con- connectivity of the internet like got allowed these people to talk to each other and at first it seemed like it was pretty okay and then it's then it was like uh oh somebody found the cash machine on this thing and so <laughs> now it's bad. <laughs> Yep. Now it's bad. To or maybe if you do and they're giving you bad advice, if you don't know how to kind of conduct yourself in that in that way, how to ask somebody out, it can be very difficult. And it's even made even worse when it feels like everybody else is like having sex all the time, but you aren't. Mm. When you've said before, I've um, that a lot of dating advice is written in such a way as to avoid cancellation. What do you mean by that? And also that I think a lot of it's written to by, avoid um, cancellation. What, I, I actually, that's a good question. What do you mean to avoid cancellation? There are a lot of things you could do. I could do something on a date tomorrow night that if it got out, it would get me canceled, but it would involve me like smacking the person for no reason or some other yeah. like, like a gross violation of their boundaries and consent, you know? I really hope that what he means is like advice, like don't have non-consensual sex with someone. Right. Because like, yes, that is designed to keep you from getting canceled by not breaking the law. Right. You get can you get canceled by uh first um probably rumor and then by an arrest and then by the court. Yeah, but I'm sure what he means is like don't admit to being a racist or else you'll get canceled. And it's like you probably should admit that you're a racist if you're like a racist and you're trying to date someone who doesn't want to date a racist like don't be a secret racist in a relationship <laughs> don't does be that the, make sense i mean yeah. don't be a racist at all yeah but yeah, like yeah. like if you are one don't be a secret one in a relationship right if there's secret r- racist in your relationship you, you, it shouldn't be you it shouldn't be the other person either <laughs> but <laughs> actually actually yeah. you know what that's just a no-win situation never mind <laughs> yeah yeah i mean i think a lot of the so, so I, I'm writing a book at the moment on the manosphere, and one of the things, one of the kind of early incarnations of the manosphere was the pickup community, which came out of you know reached the mainstream with Neil Strauss's book, The Game, in 2005. And one of the reasons that emerged, in my opinion, it emerged on internet forums, you know, basic internet forums in the era of like dial-up internet. And one of the reasons it emerged is because I think mainstream dating advice, particularly for men, is is tends to be very bad or just non-existent. Um, one reason for that is women. The, the romance has typically been the female realm, you know, it's a, supposedly. Fuck? So it's been in the past. The pressure has been on women to find a husband. The pressure has been on women to find a partner. Yet we kind of enter the the late twentieth century, early twenty first century, and there's everything's changed now. You know, marriage isn't isn't necessarily. There isn't that cultural pressure to get married, to get married, which I think arguably is a good thing. Oh, really? For women, um, but at the same time, men ne- don't necessarily know how to conduct themselves in the kind of dating environment. So it's uh, unless you, it's, it's kind of you're told like either you're good looking, either you have it or you don't. And if you don't, it's like what what am I supposed to do? How am I supposed to kind of? I think uh, what's going to be missing from this is that a lot of men don't have platonic friendships with women, and so like. If you don't have any gal pals or whatever, you can't like ask your gal pals like, oh, I went on this date and it went so bad. And if you have a gal that's like a friend of yours, she could well, can tell me about it. Maybe she'd be like, oh, dude, dude, I know you didn't know this, but like most of us don't like X, Y, and Z. I know what you were doing because I'm your friend, but you've never met this person. So don't do that <laughs> because it's going to put this person yep. off. It would put me off on a first date, you know, like... <clears throat> It's it. I think the the main problem. I think one of the main problems, and um, I have just like I'm not. I haven't fully formed this thought, but it's that this conversation about dating um, <clears throat> that men are having, they're only having it with men. Yep. And if women are involved in the conversation, it's like on like some manosphere channel, either like these kind of new sort of like like manosphere slash uh, wealth influencers, where they just have some you know. Um, 
influence her on and make fun of her, or they'll have a woman on to like reinforce the tropes that the, that the men are telling each other about women in dating. But there's just not a lot of dating advice out there for men, especially on the internet, coming from people who uh, regularly have women on their shows. Like, there's like, uh, uh, there have been like videos of women giving dating advice to men, which I think is great and we need more of that. But like, a lot of men don't want to receive advice from women, which is like, it boggles my mind because it's like that's the person like that's what you're trying to get a woman why wouldn't you take advice from a woman right right even if you're like well like i i I saw literally i just saw like on a video someone commented below the video they were like if i'm trying to catch a fish why would i ask advice from the fish i'm gonna ask advice from a successful fisherman and it's like what the fuck no that's what you're not trying to catch a fish you're trying to date someone <laughs> and wouldn't the perspective of both be useful the fish is like hey i like little dangly <laughs> things that look like a look like a worm i will eat that <laughs> but like the other thing is like okay let's so let's say you you watch a uh dating advice from a woman and you're like ah oh, i could take or leave most of these but it seems like number three is actually some good advice that i never thought about like if it's you know, 12 rules for going and fucking yourself or maybe getting going and fucking a woman or whatever it is. Like, even if you only get one of them that you're like, oh shit, I never thought about that. Then the fucking, yeah, yeah, that's, that's fine. This is so, this is going to be hell cringe. This is going to be a hell of cringe. Yep. Come on. So I think uh, there's, that's one of the reasons why I think the, the kind of pickup scene emerged that for all its faults, it came out of a vacuum. Um, and I also think a lot of the mainstream dating advice uh, from men, particularly recently. Oh, another thing he just said. Uh, also, he was talking about like, well, I'm not uh, a good looking. I can't remember exactly how he put it, but he's like, well, I'm not a good looking person. So there's nothing for me. And it's like a lot of the the men that seek this kind of advice from from guys like this are so worried about looks that their looks are the thing that are keeping them from dating when almost always in that situation, it's not your looks. It's that like you treat women poorly. You know what I mean? It, it doesn't really talk about how to approach someone. For example, say, say you're in a bar or something, how to approach someone in a way that's, uh, you know, respectful, but also assertive. Like you have to actually put yourself out there. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, it helps if you're having fun at the bar and you just bump into somebody, you're like, Oh, Hey, what's up? <laughs> Oh, hey, who are your friends? Like, <laughs> yeah. And if you don't like being at the bar, don't go to the bar. Right, right. But even in this situation, like, what, what really helps is like if you're, you just have to be like open to whatever experience you're going to have there versus like being out there, oh, I want to meet a girl or I want to meet, you know, in my case, I want to meet a guy. Well, I mean, I don't really go to a gay bar for the music generally, although the sound system at Splash was fucking slamming. If, if you'd ever been there with <laughs> us upstairs at Splash, the sound system is just absolutely slamming. But um, yeah, you just go and you dance. And if you drink, you buy a few drinks. And if you don't drink, you don't fucking sit there and silently judge people who are drinking. And you fucking maybe bring some friends and have a good time. And maybe somebody will notice you even like it tells people almost nowadays to like go on dating apps and it will just happen for you mm-hmm. it doesn't really tell you how to I mean, that's, that's grinder yourself, for example today on social media um doesn't how, tell you anything about how to kind of uh you know have good photos what a good photo looks like how to create a good bio and also how not to be kind of too needy because mm-hmm. one of the issues i think with um with kind of mainstream dating advice is very good on talking about yeah, politically correct dating advice is very good. And I think it's correct to talk about how uh, people should be respectful of people, other people's boundaries, how, you know, if you approach someone they're not interested, you know, you should apologize, back off, you know, have a nice evening. You don't have to apologize. Yeah, that's that. You shouldn't be pushy at all. But I think a lot of the people who... Yeah, that's say, actually uh, good well, advice. Like, like the don't be too needy and don't like push it after you've been rejected. Right. Oh, and, like, especially don't lash out after you've been rejected. Right, don't do anything after you, but you don't even have to apologize. You just go, oh, okay. <laughs> like, that's I mean, fine. you don't even have to respond. You could just delete the conversation. That's fine, too. Or at a bar, you just shrug your shoulders and walk off. <laughs> like, Yep. <laughs> 
they're not assertive they're shy they're not the problem is not that they're overstepping people's boundaries the problem is that they're not taking any action at all in the first place because they're afraid of like almost ashamed of their masculinity ashamed of what? offending someone ashamed of being kind well, of well uh, if you're uh, in a social situation and you offend somebody i mean you shouldn't you shouldn't like carry deep shame from it but you should maybe go uh oh what, what, what's going on here why did i you should be a little bit self-reflective afterwards like yeah also like if you're worried that like uh the things that you're saying are constantly offending people probably think about like why you are just in general an offensive person like and maybe like don't do that or like my mom told me when i was eight she said did you know that you don't have to say everything that you think <laughs> <laughs> i don't know if i was eight but i i have a memory <laughs> when i was a kid <laughs> i hate my mom's advice when i was a child Afraid of being rejected, mm. so I think um, you know, the mainstream dating advice is so so concerned with kind of uh, you know warning people not to overstep people's boundaries that it kind of doesn't cater at all to those people who that isn't they have a very different problem. Mm. Is, are, are we going too far that way? Is there too much uh, of offense and fear? I know that I mean I've, I've not been single for a long time now, and if I were, I would be petrified to approach someone partly just because I don't want to be rejected, but partly because I might overstep some modern boundary that maybe wasn't necessarily there 10 15 years ago i mean do people still go Dude, you're 30 <laughs> right this guy's like 30 i don't know how old he is but he's like 30. maybe he, maybe he met his so when he was 15 people in a cafe and say hello or is that now creepy no i mean i think it's, it depends. it depends it's just not creepy to say hello in the cafe what and it really depends is somebody sitting there by themselves looking like they're bored and staring at their cup of coffee maybe if you're not even interested in them at a cafe the point of a cafe <laughs> is that you're that you're like hey can i sit here you go hey what are you doing i say you just look bored over here i didn't bring my book i forgot my headphones you want to chat That's yeah like but if someone has their headphones on or they're reading a book those are clear signs that like they don't want you to say hello. So I mean, if you know them, so, yeah, if you know them, that's fine. But like, if if they're a stranger, don't don't and don't hit on the barista. Don't 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 hit on don't hit on anyone while they're at work. You may unconsciously yeah. flirt with people, and that's fine. But if you if you're unconsciously flirting with someone and they're at work and they're interested, they can they they can take the, they can take that initiative because they're being paid to be nice to you. Yep. Uh these warnings about you know not overstepping someone's boundaries because there are people out there who are who behave in this entitled way will go and you know ask someone out and the person is interest in, isn't interested and they'll take this in a very um they'll lash out with the person and i think women often have to be polite to someone who approaches them because they fear that if they if they say no to someone if they reject someone that person will lash out um and i think yeah there is there is a tendency if you spend a lot of time on social media where sometimes very shrill activist voices are very loud i think it can lead you to think you know oh you know if you approach someone uh they might like report you for harassment or something huh? i think you know in the right context i think that stuff is still going on as it I mean, was, if you're as harassing them like, they, they might <laughs> but like or if they think you are if that's something that has happened to you maybe like think about what you did right the club people are kind of like hitting on someone else or just mm. approaching someone because it's kind of accepting in that environment there is a way to do it and a way not to do it i think um and i feel like a lot of people there again there's a vacuum who no one is saying no one is kind of teaching that stuff to, to young men you know no one is um you know there are there are kind of some charlatans on the internet there's some good and bad advice you can find on platforms like youtube and some of it is some of it is pretty decent but in the mainstream if you're not going out there looking for it Mm. there's nothing really there's nothing really teaching a, like a young man how to do you know the right way and the wrong way to do that i keep seeing a statistic about one in three young men are sexless is that something you've seen and, and what's going on there is that something to worry about uh, i bet yeah. that's about the fucking same as it ever was baby is that something to worry about and like over, seriously and over like what period of time do they mean do they mean they've never had sex or that it's been like six months three months a year i mean i start getting a little bit weird after like three or four weeks but i am a if i belong in horny jail like i said earlier <laughs> like <laughs> and like you've always got your hand yeah and i just don't You're know feeling like, a little pent up just go grab a bottle of lotion and a tissue and I just don't know historically if this one in three number is 
out of the ordinary. I can't imagine it not being out of the ordinary. All right, yeah, I can't imagine it yeah. being out of the ordinary. I don't, it's, yeah, like, and what do they mean by, again, there's just like so, so much missing. Like, does this mean one in three men under 30 have never had sex? Okay, that might be higher than it was at one point. But again, like, I don't know. And they're not being very clear about what this means. Yeah, and also, is it the same for women? Right. But the women, well, if you could imagine this, they're not really going to center women in this conversation except for as the object of desire, right? That's that's already yeah. sort of how it's being talked about. Yeah, this is very much a, a men-centric podcast here. Um, they... I would be interested to know, like, what is the difference between the statistics for men and women, though? Because, like, a lot of these guys who have these really toxic views of of dating, they think of all women as just, like, having constant sex. And right. and that can't be true. They have to have jobs. It's, it's very much not true. Uh, there are plenty of women who don't have regular sex. Uh, imagine that, right? Right, right. They're the, just people, right? But this convert, they're not going to even. I don't think they're going to bring up any statistics about women in this, right? Because this is not going to. This is not focused on women. Again, women are like, um, women are, uh, uh, like almost like an NPC in this. They're like a. I'd say they're more like the the reward box at the right, end of loot, the quest. They're like a, they're like a loot crate. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you just throw money at it, apparently. <laughs> and also, like, not for nothing, uh, Andrew Gold, uh, kind of average, but the, the guy that we're fucking getting this advice from, uh, fucking smoke show. Like, <laughs> I don't know, like, I don't know what, like, a, like a kind of dumpy looking guy is ever going to look. They're going to look at this guy and go, yeah, whatever, dude. You just walk into a bar and half the women there look at you. You're fine. Like, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I I know there's been apparently a rise in like sexlessness, particularly among like among men and women, but particularly among men in recent years. Uh, I think you know partly there's kind of I, th I think partly that's that's a consequence of people staying in more, uh, you know, not going out as much. Mm. Uh, people people sometimes I think again what we talked about earlier, p your social skills can kind of atrophy. If you're not putting yourself out there, if you're spending a lot of time on the cell phone, a lot of time online, I think that could be one factor. I also think dating apps are. Uh, I, I think probably this, an, this another reason that happen. it could be. I mean, I don't. I don't have any data for this. This is just kind of a guess. But like another reason it could be is because like everyone's fucking overworked right now. Everyone has to work like two jobs just to barely scrape by. Well, they're talking right they here. Don't I, think about, I think they're talking. I think they're dating. mostly talking about college students, but a lot of those people are overworked too because they are like a full yeah. class load and have to also work in addition to the university stuff. But there are more opportunities to socialize uh, at a university. But that, that's also like assuming the model of everyone lives on or very close to campus and is part of the community around the campus, and that's becoming less and less common. A lot more people commuting to school and stuff. Let's yeah, see, let's, see what he, um, let's see what he says about dating apps here, because I'm going to fucking probably have had a very different experience with uh, dating apps and online dating than he's going to describe here. Factor. I also think dating apps are, uh, I think this, this, this tendency to kind of compartmentalize different aspects of our lives. So now you're supposed to, you know, if you want to, if you want to find someone to, to date, I think, you know, it's, you're kind of pushed towards, I'll just, just go on a dating app and the barrier for entry is really low. You just get a photo, just put a bio in. And then, you know, you, you have these, these great hopes for, you know, this is going to fix your dating life. You go on there and then, you know, your pictures maybe aren't very good. Your bio is maybe not the, what it should be. And then you get all of these kind of online rejections. And then you get people, young men, particularly just be, like, dropping out of the dating market. Oh, like, I'm, I'm not going to bother or, you know, I'm going to wait till I've sorted my finances out, wait until I've sorted out these like lifestyle things and then I'll try again. Whereas I, I actually do think. But wait a minute, if you're like, if you've hit a dry spell, like if you're like, if you like, ah, I've been trying to meet people and I haven't been able to do it. What if you do fucking uninstall the app for a couple months and fucking just go about your business for a while and then give it a go again later? Like what, what the fuck's the problem there? nothing i don't understand like nope. <clears throat> all kind of people that are trying to do things take a break from it and if like yeah if you're trying to date and it's stressing you out fucking stop trying to date for a little while hang out with your friends fucking spend time with your mom and dad fucking 
don't know, pet a cat or something. I don't know. A more old fashioned way of actually putting yourself out there, joining, you know, finding a hobby, finding people with similar interests to yourself, putting yourself in those environments to meet women. But I think this is not, wait, this is dumb too, though, because this is not mutually exclusive from being on Tinder. Being on Tinder takes like zero time and you could be part of like a badminton club or like a, you know, a, a, be like playing like, um, like co-ed pickup basketball games or, you know what I'm saying? You could be doing all kinds of di going to dinner parties and be on Tinder. These are not, he's talking about these things like they're, like they're not the same, but they're the part of the same endeavor. I don't not go to events and, you know, be like, oh, look at him kind of take a look i'm like i don't need that i'm on grinder like no <laughs> like what the fuck man it's better than than dating apps for a lot of people and I, I also think a lot of us me included um a lot of people don't know how to present themselves necessarily well online so you have someone who who may have a lot of great qualities but they're they're putting these pictures um up on on the internet you know and it looks like they're living in like a, a dustbin or something <laughs> it's it's not yeah it, for someone who knows nothing about you they, they don't know how to put their, their best foot forward if you like online and i think that's so important um nowadays and it, and it sucks in many ways like many of us don't want to play that kind of online like status game or whatever but i think if but you don't have to i think the problem that a lot of young men have is that they've been convinced that this is what you have to do that you have to play this online status game that you have to be what they call a high value partner or whatever and like i think most people are just looking for someone at the and initially that they're attracted to who's cool to them and maybe attracted to them back and like longer term they're looking for like is this a trustworthy person is this a person i can talk to is this is this person you know good at dealing with conflict when that comes up that's like what people are looking for they're not they're this this state i think <clears throat> i think and i'd be willing to bet if you polled young women women finding out that men are trying to do this status game thing as he described it they're going to be like oh hell no Are, are you here? Yeah. Okay. If you're trying, and it, seem, it seems corny and stuff, but I think if you're actually trying to uh, put yourself out there, I think you need to learn the etiquette of, of what works and what doesn't on platforms like, like first of all, platforms like Tinder or Hinge or, or whatever. Or Grindr. But also platforms like Instagram <laughs> as well, where which was, is also almost a dating app uh, nowadays. Yeah. I, I wonder to though? what extent it is. I'm just thinking out loud here. Uh, I don't think that is a dating app. Sort of lie, in yeah, fact, it's know. real bad form to just slide up in someone's DMs, even if you're someone they might be attracted yep. to. Yeah. Um, and also, like, I do think he's right that uh, the the dating apps, you really do have to kind of, like, learn what works on them, which sucks because... They all have their own like strategies, I guess. That makes it sound like a game, but like they all have things that that do and don't work, and it it sucks. Dating apps suck. No, they don't. Well, <laughs> your experience and my experience are probably pretty different on dating apps. Very much so. Very, very much so. <laughs> Sometimes you see me a little tired. You know, like Dave hasn't slept much. Well, it's probably the result of a dating app. The mid 1900s <laughs> about this is how you have fun. You go out and you drink and you drink until you're blattered and you're out at a club and you can't hear anyone or talk to anyone and there's smoke. No, but nobody's going to want to No, You're not going to meet anybody if you're fucking blotto. You're not. If you're fucked up, you're not going to meet anybody. It's. It's not that it's impossible. It's just that your your judgment is off. You're going to look sloppy. Mm -hmm. Like even if you are dressed to kill or whatever, you're gonna look like you're just gonna look like a mess in a. You're look, gonna look like a mess in a fifteen hundred dollars suit by the end of the night. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> <laughs> and you shouldn't be trying to meet someone when you're when you're that like sloshed. Right. You should be like like like. Do not leave your friend's side. Like, yeah, <laughs> you don't need another group of friends r walking around the club being like we should find your friends you came <laughs> yeah. here with friends we should find your friends that's a real bad first impression <laughs> yep <laughs> that's uh that's very likely an only impression 
out at a club and you can't hear anyone or talk to anyone and there's smoky things everywhere and you wake up feeling terrible and we were told that was that's what fun is but then you speak to people and everyone's like well i don't i don't know if i actually had fun and people are st- i don't know people are drinking less now aren't they and maybe maybe there are other things to life yeah, I mean, 19, 1990s, right? Not 1900s. Uh, I, mean, yes. I, I don't know that far. I can't remember that far back. But Well, I'm thinking back to like starting with Gatsby. So what, yeah, what he just mentioned, I was one. talking about earlier, where if you don't have fun at the bar, like don't go to the bar. Like if the only reason that you're going to the bar is to try and hook up, you probably shouldn't be going to the bar because if you are unsuccessful at hooking up, you're not going to have a good night. Whereas if you just enjoy being at the bar, then by all means, go, you're going to have a fun time. I feel like the best advice that a lot of these young men that are trying to date people can, can hear from anyone about dating is do what you enjoy. Surround yourself with other people that enjoy doing those things. And then if you meet someone who is also single that you click with, ask them out. <clears throat> and this is all kind of situation based right like there's you know you don't you do yoga you don't go asking all the women at the yoga place out right like it's a little more intimate yeah you don't want to be like that's what i mean is like if you're doing what you're enjoying like asking someone out will will be the second thought like after you meet them and you have fun and you know you're you're both talking about how much you enjoy whatever you're doing uh then after that you you could think like oh i actually really like that person and they mentioned they're single too well maybe i should ask them out when and then if t- you get rejected just you know take it take it respectfully well it's not just that too it's like if you're doing things you enjoy in your life even if you meet somebody like outside of that they're going to notice that you do things in your yes. life that you enjoy and they might they might associate that with you being a fun person Yep. <laughs> whereas, yeah. Whereas like if you're only looking for women in places that you don't even like to be like, everyone is going to notice that you're like hanging out in places you don't want to be hanging out with. And like the, the people that you talk to there are going to pick up on it that you're not having a good time. Yeah. It's a, <clears throat> it's also like the, uh, the day of like the singles bar is kind of gone, right? There used to be bars that like the, if they were like kind of hook up right? They were kind of cruisy. Um, okay. Let me, let me rephrase that for straight people. The cruisy bars are gone because <laughs> there are like in San Jose, there are three, uh, basically three gay bars and I could rank them on how cruisy they are. I think that the one in the <laughs> middle is the best because it's not the kind of place where someone will stand three feet away from you and stare at you and not say hello, which I dislike. Um, (laughs) and then like, obviously the least cruisy one is splash because they have this massive sound system and it's like a, it's like a nightclub. People are there to dance. So, Mm -hmm. but it's, um, I think people do need like places to gather where like alcohol isn't the focus, but that's always been the problem. Even like just for when you think about people who are 18 to 21 who maybe aren't in university or are commuting to school, like where are they going to meet people to date? You don't really want to hit on the people in your classes, right? That's not the real place that you meet people. If when you're at university, it's like you meet them in the, the second layer out of the culture around the university, the parties, the, you know, the, the, I guess the parties and the, like the, the extracurricular events, the fucking, I guess the protests, I don't know, you know, what if we kiss under the guillotine, that kind of thing. <laughs> Like we're having but the, the, like you should say like if you meet someone in your class and and you do like them it's not I wouldn't say it's completely inappropriate to ask them out but you have to do it in an in an appropriate way you know what I mean I like think there's definitely place. inappropriate ways to do it I think it's I don't know I don't want to get too deep into the weeds in this because it's uh, I'm long out of university and I don't know what campus culture is like and I don't want to turn into one of these fucking you know, middle-aged men talking to you about campus culture because, oh, we make fun of that a little bit. (laughs) But I also think that like, if you like somebody from one of your classes or whatever, and you're like around campus, you're probably going to see them around somewhere else and it might be better to not do it like at class. Oh yeah. Like do it outside of class. (laughs) Yes. But again, I don't want to, I'm not, I'm not here to give dating advice to college students. (laughs) I sometimes date uh, grad students, but that's different. 
party. Yeah, yeah. Everyone's having fun. And people are like, you know, I quite like sitting at home with a hot chocolate and playing a computer game. Yeah, I mean, I also think it's like, I, I spent some time going out, like actually leaving the house over Christmas. Cause, uh, Wait a minute, but there are places, there are literally bars where you play video games at the bar. Like, what about that? Yeah. Oh, um, oh, they don't have, the, I guess your your rig with the 3090 isn't there. So, you know, I mean, what, if that's the only <laughs> thing about you, then yeah. But like you go and you play fucking Gallagher or something, you fucking talk to people. <laughs> you know, it's, girl walks by, she's like, I got next to you. Like, oh, you, you come here often? She's like, what do you mean? I'm, I'm like, Gallagher. You, you come to this machine often, <laughs> you know? Like, there are actually, there are fucking bars for those people now, if you could imagine that. Yeah, uh, the one in San Jose, I think, is called One Up, right? Level is Up. That? Level Up. Level Up, yeah. That mm. one's a really cool bar. They also have a Mini Boss, which is another one now. Ah, but uh, like, the, I but, think but what I've I'm saying is, what I'm saying is yeah. this idea that you can't <laughs> play video games or be into video games and have a place to socialize is incorrect. Every, yeah. like, yep. every big city <laughs> has a place like this. Yep. And even if you can't socialize on, uh, like in real life at a real place, like video games are a place where you can socialize and you can meet people. Yeah, but they're that's they're not local generally. Yeah, and you you would have to be okay with that. Um, yeah, cash out with old friends, and uh, I think the cost of living has got something to do with it at the moment because you know. You can go to like Audi and buy a, a good bottle of wine for like nine pounds or something. Then you go out to the pub and it's like fourteen quid for two for two drinks. Uh, and it's I think it's that bad. that's kind of part. Have of Have you it. heard of uh, the the all the regulations and fucking fees and fucking the lease and like having to replace fucking chairs that people broke? Dude, owning a bar is fucking expensive. You dumb fuck. That's why the <laughs> they're not they're not sitting there going. <laughs> it's not they're not like fucking. They're not like Scrooge McDuck in their big pile of money. Like most people that own like a regular <laughs> bar are making like a middle class salary off of their bar. They're not yep. getting rich off the bar. Yeah, they're they're doing that because there are other expenses. They're they're providing you a place to drink. There's a jukebox yep. there they have to maintain. The bathroom has to be like if you want to meet women there, the bathrooms there have to be something a woman would want to go into, for example. Like <laughs> <laughs> Yep. It's it's the the cost of living and how expensive it is to actually go out nowadays. Mm. And yeah, I think you have an entertainment system at home. I think COVID changed a lot of this. Whereas so men will practically piss in anything. Much harder to get some people to come out now since COVID because they've got into these habits where it's like staying in all the time. Um, you know, they've got these subscriptions. They they got like how many bars have COVID. you been in where the urinal um, is just I, a I just trough? Do, oh yeah, yeah. There's a couple bars in uh, the Castro where the the trough's like on the ground. <laughs> it's, no it's fucking whatever like it's it's charming actually go out less you see this with um like retailers are struggling like nightlife is struggling i'm honestly like, surprised that i've never COVID. been into a bar where the bathroom is literally just a big tile room with a single drain in the center of the floor so this guy's saying the retail is dying but this has nothing to do this is the result of online shopping and the fact that i can get something 20 bucks cheaper than i can at a local shop and have it here tomorrow or sometimes today if I order it early enough. And that the local shop, like if I want that piece of uh, music gear, if I go to like a music shop or even like a guitar center, they're not going to maybe necessarily even have what I'm looking for. So they're going to have to order it. And like, that's a pain in the ass for them actually. Right. Or they're going to have to get it from like another shop. And now like, I don't know. It's just like not a good experience. Um, the good experiences in retail are like, I like buying my clothes in person if I can like, and that's it. Yep. Or things like household supplies or groceries. Those are all yeah. great to buy in person. Right. But like, this isn't, this isn't, I mean, the pandemic may have accelerated this, but this was already heading in that direction. And this really doesn't have anything to do with dating. Unless this guy <laughs> thinks you were going to like meet a, meet a gal at the fucking container shop or something <laughs> yeah don't try and pick up girls at the at the store but i think people got more during lockdowns people got in this habit of staying in a lot more mm -hmm. doing things online swiping a lot more instead of actually going out and i th I, I think with the dating partic in particular um it just is it just does feel easier to uh log on you know set up a dating app profile and swiping whereas i think like approaching someone in person to meet them is uh is, is difficult you know it, it, like it, it he keeps just, talking about it, these things like you can't try both it is like nerve-wracking it doesn't always go well and it's 
I think I, I think it takes takes like practice to actually be able. If to this guy approached me at the that. bar, I'd be like, <laughs> but that's that's and, maybe not what we're talking people about. People who've advocated that in the past have been kind of quite sleazy, like pickup artists. So. That's true, yeah. I'm sort of adding, I know it's quite a, um, a stereotypical thing for someone who's getting a bit older to do. I'm sort of adding things that we should have learned at school to uh, the agenda. So taxes, posture, um, and, and I suppose that's, that's one now as posture. well. Posture. Like how to talk and approach, how to talk to and approach women in a way that isn't sleazy and trying to get numbers and things, but just- No, 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 no. I don't want them teaching you that in fucking like high school. Then you have all these dudes practicing this shit. Like, come on, dude, this would get, this would be a mess. Did his teachers not tell him to sit up straight? <laughs> He's not old enough for them to hit him on the fucking wrist with a or on the fingers with a ruler <laughs> if he didn't, right? <laughs> yeah. He's also confident and that kind of thing. Um, I think alcohol must have something to do with it as well. I, mm -hmm. I knew a guy who ran a swingers bar in Canada, and then he set up a second one in Buenos Aires where they don't drink as much. And he just struggled because no one's approaching. Yeah, because people in Argentina don't have the same binge drinking culture we have in like Canada, America, the UK, Australia. You know, we really binge drink. And in Buenos Aires, they sit with like a bottle of wine and they basically sit there like for hours and they haven't finished the wine yet. And he's like watching them like, come on, come on. And it's like not getting them going. They won't get frisky or anything like that. So maybe alcohol has something to do with it. Yeah, sure. Mm. Sure, like social lubrication. Social lubrication. Yeah, I like that. Um, oh, you've never heard that life. before? God damn, that was, what a turn of phrase. Right. I'm wondering, um, and actually not beauty bias. Why is it that I'm always hearing that it's harder for men than women with dating? Because in my head, I'm just thinking oh, because men are bitching about it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> it is equally hard. Men are just really annoying about it. <laughs> men are just being drama queens about it. All right. <laughs> Because all the most yeah. popular creators on YouTube, which is probably the only place this person consumes any content, are all men. And I, he's his algorithm's got to be real fucked up, right? <laughs> like, he's creating this kind of stuff. Yeah, like, he's kind of telling on himself <laughs> by saying, like, why do we only hear about men not being able to date? Well, the algorithm's going to suggest to you things that you want to hear, so... Okay, well, it's one and one. So, like, if, if it's like, for example, you said before, it's harder for men at the moment getting sex. So, how is that happening? There's the same amount of women as men. What's going on? Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't say it's harder for men. I think it's different for men and women. Mm. Like, it's it's harder in some ways for women and harder in some ways for men. So, I think women, you know, there's there's that Chris Rock uh, scene, you know, that joke about women just leaving the house and just being bombarded with this deluge of, like, dick. Mm -hmm. And it's... it's <laughs> I think women like tend to have to fend off creepers and there are much there are many more concerns about their safety and you know, even going on a date with someone it's like he, they have to you know ask their friend you know I'll, you know I'll text you when I when I get home and stuff and whereas as a guy you don't that's not something you really worry about as much so I think women you know have to take a lot more care in vetting who they go out with vetting who they you know bring back to their house vetting who they even give their personal details to their phone number to because if sometimes you know if they decide they don't like that person that guy is then going to be blowing up their phone for the next you know, month or, or more it's like this this is um women know how to use their phone dude they can block his number <laughs> come on dude this is this is harder for women but then for men i think it's um you know it's, it can be just harder to to even be noticed at all so i mean whereas women are kind of fend can be fending off like creepy creepy guys and stuff with with men i think especially i mean attractive media, women sure but like unattractive women still have the same problem that unattractive men do in like attracting people to date them like people that they're they too are attracted to or whatever yeah 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 like that's another one of these myths of uh like you you know the chart you remember the chart yeah that's where these things yeah. always end and i i know the chart so well that there's a command in the chat yeah. if you hit exclamation point chart it shows you the chart where like the the girl on the bottom is like the the little line is going up to the guy on the top yeah and it's like no that's that is fictitious and yeah that's uh it's just one of those myths that won't die. And again, I think we, I think we, at the beginning of this, this particular, we'll call it a segment. We sort of hit it. It's just that men are bitching about it. <laughs> yep. <laughs> have like status, unless you're, you know, exactly how to present yourself online, unless you're like good looking, uh, stereotypically good looking, conventionally attractive. It can be very hard to be noticed at all. You're just one of this kind of, it just feels like 
you, you look on the comments of any any attractive woman's social media and there's just just this deluge of of men writing like the, the, yeah yeah the smiley faces and stuff and i think kind of knowing how to navigate that can be very confusing for young men especially because so much of that goes on uh online now and i think also the onus is on men to approach in real life as well so there was a there was a study i think uh, a survey which i think was reported by the guardian it was I can't remember the exact figure, but it's around eight out of 10 women still expect a man to make the first move in terms of approaching or asking them out. So there is still that. Maybe we fix that. It's still down to men to kind of take the yeah. risk to, to put themselves out there to, to make the first move. And I think that that goes right through the process. So, so men are expected typically, uh, again, it's not always true, but but typically men are expected to, to ask someone out. Men are expected to kind of, to make the first move in terms mm. of suggesting, you know, where, where you go on a date. Men are expected to make the first move in, in whether you whether you go home together or whether you have a second date. Do you think that's um, biological or, or societal? Uh, I'd imagine like anything is both. I imagine like anything is both. I mean, probably leaning pretty hard on societal again, with 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 the element of risks that's involved for for women. In Wait, did he just say it was often. up to the man whether you have a make- second date? Well, he says he didn't say. I mean, he. I think if I'm gonna be like generous, I think he meant that it, the the onus would be on the man maybe to ask about a second. Oh, date. okay, okay, that makes sense. I mean, makes, I disagree make- that. Maybe I disagree that that's how it should be. Well, uh, we're, talking about, we're not that. talking about. I, I think ought, he's ta- saying it. It ought not be that. Yeah, we're talking about it is not ought though. Okay. Th- this whole shit ought to be completely some other way, I suppose. Yeah. Makes sense for for men to be the ones who kind of are expected to move things forward. Um, and I also think you know women take longer to inv- to evaluate a man in terms of whether he's like a suitable dating prospect i think and way up a lot more different factors where i think men tend to be a bit more shallow um and there, there probably are i mean i don't know i'm not an expert on this but there probably are some like evolutionary reasons for this because there's more risk involved for a woman in getting pregnant with the wrong person you know oh yeah that's a great point what is the 80 20 bias i'm always hearing about uh it's 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 essentially oh, it's the, the chart <laughs> oh gosh it's the chart <laughs> <laughs> they're literally going to talk about the chart. They're not going to show the chart, but they're going to they're going to do the chart. Yeah, you had to know. I mean, you 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 knew it was coming. That's what you you knew that some version of it was coming in this video. Otherwise, you wouldn't mention the chart. Let's hear how they talk about the eighty twenty thing. The, this is the theory, anyway. That the the, the top twenty percent of men online are are getting eighty percent of the dates. Okay. Basically. So so you have like eighty percent of women chasing the twenty percent of men uh, online. The thing with this is it's it tends to be true on like a dating app like Tinder, where where it's very superficial, where it's all about the photo. There's not even much much of it. It's done on on the bios people write. It's almost all done on photo. So if you look on Tinder, I think OK Cupid had some stats like this as well. Um, it does show that a very small percentage of men are doing very well, but but apart from that, a lot of men aren't doing very well. Mm-hmm. I think one thing that I've noticed recently is some people are transposing this onto real life. Whereas I think in real life, it's a lot more complicated. You, you do have a, like most sex still happens within monogamous relationships. Um, there's, there's, you know, there isn't this big kind of sense of inequality where it's just like a small bunch of men like Dan Balzerian with these kind of supposed harems, but online, this is why I say to, 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 anyone who asked me about this, like particularly young men, is like, you should actually try and date in the real world. Because unless you're both. presenting yourself both in this friend, very both. particular way on an app like Tinder, it's, it's just going to be very hard for you. Yeah, I never, when I, I mean, it's been 10 years. That was years well put though. I, I, never uh, I hope that a lot of the incel types hear that and, and take that to heart. Dates. The only thing I'm not sure about is that most sex happens in the confines of monogamous relationships. I'd be curious to know where he got that information but i may have my own uh, horny jail bias or anything from it i never felt and you know we're pretty you know we're presentable young men did you ever feel like you were in that sort of top 20 percent uh i mean i don't know i mean i met my uh, sir yes on on hinge hmm. so um my profile was obviously okay but I, at the same time i did spend quite a lot of time uh speaking to people who had better profiles than me asking what they did i got good photos taken hmm. I had good photos from the things I did with work, you know, public speaking, things like that. Oh, um, professional. So, yeah, I mean, so, it, so it, it does kind of convey the right things. It like eventually- He's like, oh, I didn't know I should have used the headshot from the modeling agency I was working with. Good. 
Um, yeah, but yeah. It, but you do have to kind of work on this stuff. And I think that's an area where, again, I think women know that they have to work on this stuff. They know that they have to get decent photos. They know that they have to, to, to present themselves well. Where I think as men, we, we haven't for a long time because it's been, you know, for a long time, we kind of, that wasn't how we found a partner historically. Mm-hmm. Um, whereas I think, uh, yes, uh, men never, well, men never dressed happen. sharp and well. got a haircut before a big fucking date. Nope, never happened. Yeah, that that is that's so utterly wrong. Like it, it has always been. You know, both parties. Like, where did the term peacocking might be a new term? But it's men that we use. It's usually we yeah. use it for men. Yeah, that might be a new term, but the act of peacocking has been around for a long, long time. Yeah, it's just that... Essentially it's, since the beginning of humanity. <laughs> I think it's just viewed differently, right? Because you're not like... there. I think the difference... I swear to you, I think the difference is going to be the makeup, right? Where they're like, well, we don't put on makeup before we go out, so we're not doing any of this stuff. It's like, well, really? Really? Yeah, but like we brush our hair. Oh and, yeah, yeah. No, I'm, I'm not. I'm, I'm not. Put on accessories. Yeah, a nice watch. God, men love to accessorize. I'm yeah. a man. I love to accessorize. Yeah, men who don't even care what time it is will wear a nice watch. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> oh, on meeting people through Instagram, they they don't they aren't always necessarily the the best good the most good looking people or the most high status people, but they know how to present themselves very well online. And yeah, sometimes that can stray over into fakery. Um, yes. which I wouldn't endorse that, but, but there is a way to present yourself, which is better than, um, what a lot of people are doing. I mean, I've had friends who showed me their dating app profiles cause they're like, oh, I'm not getting any matches. And it's like, there's no, they, there's nothing wrong with them. And then they'll show me and it's like these, these photos are, are terrible. Mm. It's like you, you could just spend a bit of money getting some professionals photos taken, or you could, you know, when you go out get someone to opportunistically just take a photo while you're having a good time with friends or something. Um, but it's just they to they gotta practice like it, the anyway. turning turning back doing doing the duck face that well that. You practice that and that's golden you'll be great i mean this is like again <laughs> this is like the most this is like the this is not like <clears throat> revolutionary advice they're like for your dating profile you should have a good photo a good good and recent yep. photo of yourself <laughs> yep yeah something accurate where when someone meets you in real life they're not going to feel like they've just been catfished right but also you know get take take a bunch of pictures and maybe show them to like a a, a gal you hang out with be like which one should i use for my dating profile and she'd be like oh the third one oh honey the third one then you listen yep. to her <laughs> but most of the yep. people they're talking to don't talk to any women except their mom you can't just like throw well, then ask your mom yeah that's actually not the word she'll probably would... lie but <laughs> <laughs> she'd be like honey you look great in all of these you'd be like yeah mom but could you pick your favorite my god <laughs> and then you put and you put my then on your dating profile like like a fun person you put my mom picked my dating profile uh, this is but here's, here's <laughs> yeah about, mom approved yeah <laughs> and just be like oh you know i'm not getting any not getting any uh matches and you know woe is me and you have to actually i mean that's where i agree with something i heard jordan peterson say a, a mm. while ago like I, I, oh i'm stunned a lot of things i disagree <laughs> with him about but he said before oh, did he is it, I, I know what he i know what he agreed with that jordan peterson said he said he's this one i'm defenseless against that kind of female insanity no you need to actually look at yourself and say am i am i what i'm presenting to the world is it actually you know is it a good offer you know or mm. or is um or am i doing something wrong instead of blaming like other people whenever someone mentions jordan peterson on the podcast i have to ask if you can do an impression no, I can't. You Especially can't. not this time of the day. No, no. <laughs> Make no. your bed. Bloody. No, I can't. Man, God. Andrew isn't even trying. He won't even go falsetto on it for fear of sounding like a, you know. Maybe try later, but I can't yeah. at the moment. No. Make your bed, buckle. You <laughs> know? Um, yeah, well, he says to That's actually a pretty good impression. Yeah, not a bad Kermit impression. A controversial figure, but I've had so many people who don't know who he is and don't know what he said um, just automatically dislike him and automatically go, oh, he must Oh, be yeah, that's why we don't like Jordan Peterson is we've <laughs> nobody's ever heard a goddamn, nobody's ever been subjected to video after video after video being suggested <laughs> to them on YouTube when they were just trying to watch a f- goddamn video about fishing. Like... <laughs> yeah it is very much not automatic <laughs> right whatever whatever but on psychology rather than politics my experience of, of listening to him is that he's actually telling these young men to sort of level up 
uh, rather than like, oh, you're owed something by women, which maybe an Andrew Tate might be telling mm -hmm. women. Do you, do you find that? Yeah, so I mean- Telling men, sorry. Yeah, so I mean- He literally, he, he was literally in favor of forced monogamy. What the fuck? That, Has this I guy said. never heard Jordan Peterson talk? That's not what I said. <laughs> that's not what I meant. No, he literally yeah, I, said that I know, he was I in know, favor I know, but, of forced monogamy. <laughs> but like his followers would be like, well, you were taking him out of context. And it's like, well, the full context of that interview was actually a bigger problem, but whatever. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Women, do, do you find that? Yeah, so I mean- Telling I, men, sorry. Yeah, so I mean, Jordan Peterson, again, I have many disagreements disagreements with him politically i think he's gone in a bit of a weird direction as well gone slightly conspiratorial recently mm. um in, in terms of politics i mean talking about communists and stuff all the time but his, <laughs> some of his self-help advice in terms of you know I, I remember watching him on one occasion say you know to an audience of men who are kind of frustrated with the the kind of dating environment him saying to them you know are you really the hidden gem you think you are? Or could you perhaps, instead of blaming women, could you perhaps look at yourself and say, you know, could I improve in this area? You know, could you be going to the gym? Could you be, you know, working on your dress sense more? Could you be working on your confidence, your social skills, your sense of humor? These are all things that you can work on. So I think, I, I, I think I a lot of these guys though, like the biggest that, thing they need to work on is just treating people with respect. Or I, I'm, or just chilling the fuck out, you know? Yeah, because like a lot of these these guys, they're like the the nice guy TM. You know what I'm talking about? Yes, of course. Where they'll they'll essentially do a nice gesture and think they're owed sex in return. Like somebody you're attracted to is a vending machine where kindness comes in, and in this case, like pussy comes out. Yep. Yeah. 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 So that like that is an a disrespectful way to treat someone. So. I think they just need to learn to be respectful to people. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like the idea, like the one thing th that people go, I've been friend zoned and I'm like, well, wait a minute. You mean this person doesn't want to hook up with you and wants to be your friend? Like, d I'm like, don't you have other friends where that's the case? Like, is it, why is it? Oh, because you're interested and they're not. So you should be like, oh, I, I was, I, I haven't been friend zoned. Right. You'd be like, oh, I had a crush on that person and they weren't interested. They, but they're yep. you know they're a good friend of mine or whatever like we we still have a good time that's like a healthy way to talk about it right yep for a while before i started the podcast i wanted to do like a club night on fridays and i couldn't find a place to do it i wanted to have a, a, a night called the friend zone and have the like the tagline <laughs> be like you never dance alone in the friend zone and <laughs> but we could never we couldn't find a club to let us do it uh, um it, it, the dating like environment is necessarily just rigged against certain people. Yes, there's a small number of people who, um, yeah, there's, I mean, the incel community, there's a small number of people in that community who struggle with kind of physical issues um, where it can be much harder for them in, in, yes, you have people with severe disabilities with autism. Of course, it's going to be much harder for them. And I, they do, those people do have my sympathy. Mm -hmm. But then you do have a lot of other people who are fairly normal looking who could just do a few things like go to the gym, get better clothes, um, you know, work on their financial situation so they can, like, they have a better lifestyle, uh, present themselves better on social media. And they're not doing just any, get like, rich and buff and buy nice clothes. Those things. Or not buff. And then, just get rich and uh, chiseled and buy nice clothes. Come that back easy. To me and say, you know, oh, it's, it's terrible. You know, women are. Uh, women are terrible and it's all women's fault then we can have a conversation but i i almost all of those people are not doing any of those things and then they're, they're blaming women for their own like mm. lack of success it makes me think of the growth mindset versus fixed mindset do you know about the the concept i think it was carol vaguely carol yeah. someone will correct so me. Have, have you heard the term min maxing um I, I have but can you give us a like a brief overview of what it is yeah so it's exactly what they're talking about where like they they're they are telling people to min max which is like maximize the areas of your life that that will make you attractive you know maximize like the uh how do i put it like get buff and and get fit and like try and make more money and it's like a lot of that advice of how to attract someone by min maxing is just really bad advice because that's not what most like 
some people might be attracted to that. Some people might just be attracted to someone's physical looks or someone's money. But like those kind of people usually aren't the kind of people that most other people want to date. You know what I mean? And also like, it's just, this is like, this is like an idea of like putting your best foot forward or playing your strong suit, trying to maximize, you know, they even have a, even have, you know, accentuate the positive, eliminate the negative. You know, they have songs about it. Like, you know, this is not, again, this isn't like a new concept. Yeah. But like, you know, if I could tell these, if I could tell these guys, these young men, like uh, another thing, another piece of advice is don't think that like just getting buff is going to get you a woman. Like you have to be attractive as a person to want like to be around. You don't just have to be physically attractive. You don't just have to be like uh, a piece of eye candy. You actually have to be like an enjoyable person to be around. Well, that depends on your goal too. Like if you're just trying to get some one nighters, then just being hot, probably, probably pretty, pretty strongly correlated with being able to get some like one night stands or some like v- very casual yeah. situations. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. True. I guess if that's your goal, then go for it. Just hit the gym all the time. I don't even go to the gym. Anyway, you're not talking about me. Caroline Dweck. I don't know, but it's something I've been trying to apply to my own life a little bit. Um, I've noticed it in myself. Like we all have elements of fixed mindset and growth mindset. And the fixed mindset is when you're looking at something often and going like, well, I, I think you're subconsciously sometimes telling yourself that you couldn't do it. And then because of that, you disparage the whole thing. So I'm, th- I'm trying to think of things yeah. like, like fashion. I've never been good at fashion. I don't know anything about fashion. So I've dressed pretty decided, sharp. Well, it's such a superficial, stupid thing anyway. And I'm trying to really analyze that. Like, is the reason I don't like it because I know I'm not good at it and I don't understand it. Um, and I think that can sometimes be the case. I think what you're saying is maybe uh, some of these people can have a growth mindset, which I think Jordan Peterson really encourages. Which I'll is like, get hey, the these fuck women out of here. Jordan yeah, they Peterson they encourages to. you to like, fucking worship jesus now dude he's just a fucking he's just a fucking <laughs> uh, fucking um like a like a televangelist now have you they don't have to accept <laughs> you you've got to make it so that you're better a better option for them like you say go to the gym work out get into that rather than having the fixed mindset of like oh i don't want to do but, it but but, but, but the going to like working out and exercising and stuff the benefit shouldn't isn't for other people the benefit is for you i feel better when i'm riding my bike like longer more you know what I'm saying? Like, I feel better when I'm eating better. Like the benefit isn't mm-hmm. really for other people. And it'll be, I guess it, it, the benefit then, I guess for dating is like twofold. One, you look a little bit better. You're a little healthier, better, better shape or whatever. And two, you're also, you just feel better. So you're going to be like more enjoyable to be around probably because you're in a, like a better mindset because you're, you know, exercising and eating a broccoli or whatever. Like, yeah. <sighs> terrible anyway yeah and i think if i look back at the the kind of my time in my late teens early 20s when i didn't have any success in this area didn't didn't i find it very hard to like meet people mm. um i think i also had a big a, a bigger ego about this stuff then so mm. i felt like you know oh people should just accept me for who i am even though i had these very high standards for, for other people so even though i had these very high standards in terms of who i'd be friends with or i was very judgmental um had highest high standards i think in terms of who i would who I thought was a you know girlfriend material yet I didn't really look at myself you know I thought oh people should just accept me for who I am yeah and this this is kind of hypocritical isn't it is like you have to I think you have to be honest about yourself and you can't have an ego about uh, rejection and it's very difficult like it, t- it took me a long time to kind of get to that place so you know if you have this big ego around being rejected so you have this kind of inflated idea of yourself you're never going to go and approach someone or you're never going to try going to try meet someone because you know you you don't want that that diff, that like ego of yourself that that kind of idea you've created of yourself to be deflated because if you actually put yourself out there you're you're then subjecting yourself to kind of real life you know you it's a, it's a real life experiment almost you're going to you get the, are you actually who you think you are are you actually the shit like you, <laughs> you, you in your own head you you may think you're the, you're, you're the the shit but if you put yourself out there you risk that kind of entire edifice kind of collapsing. Yeah. Um, whereas I think real self-confidence comes from putting yourself out there. Yes, you'll get rejections, but then gradually improving. And over time, you know, people gen- people start, you kind of find that people can genuinely start to like you because you're not going in with that kind of ego. You're not going in with that sense that you need them to like you. Mm-hmm. And paradoxically, I think that 
that makes people more likely to like you when like if you feel like this kind of value leech like every interaction you're going into it feels like um the other person gets this sense that you need it to work you need something from them you need them mm -hmm. to like you i think you know that it's kind of like this weird energy yeah whereas if you get into this more relaxed space where it doesn't really matter to you you know who you are you know your value system you know that you're doing the right things in life and then you go try and talk to someone you or you put yourself out there i think people feel the energy a bit more and it's just like oh like this person who's this person you know this okay thing. so the, the here's the thing it's like a lot of times when people act like they're and i i this is you know i'm gonna show my age a little bit they act like they're too cool for school or whatever that's all a fucking defense mechanism right that's all defense mechanism i well, it was a long time maybe 12 or 13 years ago my boyfriend was sort of that way like around new people and i had to like fucking I had to like elbow and be like stop it this isn't school you're not too cool for it you know like <laughs> <laughs> like stop it because he like he was just like built in right it was just like kind of built in when he would meet new people he was like like aloof and like i was like these are friends of all of your friends what are you doing like and but it's, yeah. it was it was totally a defense mechanism right because i don't i don't I, you know he had no it's not like anybody knows who this is i suppose but he had been <clears throat> been like teased in school because he was short had red hair he was adopted and the kids are cruel right so his defense mechanism was to be too cool for school but then he brought that into his mid-20s with him and i was like hey this isn't going to work out so well for us actually um <laughs> And uh, like before he met my parents, I'm like, hey, what you're going to not do is be too cool for, cool for school around my parents. All right. I was like, don't don't do that shit. He's like, all right. He, I'm like, my parents are too cool for school. But I, that's all a defense mechanism, right? It's not because you have this big ego and you think you're the shit. It's a lot of times it's the opposite. And you think you have to act that way. Yeah. They're not, they don't want anything from me. It doesn't feel like there's a downside to kind of talking with you. That's a really interesting point, actually, because I, I know like if somebody wants to sell me something, I'm immediately pushing away. Mm. And as you say, like women are getting constantly sold this and they don't want to feel like they're being sold to. <clears throat> if I think back to when I was younger, where I was going wrong as well, I think I, I really wanted a girlfriend rather than sex or whatever. And I think that probably came across as needy, even though I didn't mean for that. Whereas the guys who were out for one night stands probably had a bit of an, you know, it was nonchalance, that kind yeah. of nonchalance. Yeah. yeah. Or they were just open to more different kinds of experiences and what, and uh, interested in like whatever, wherever the night took them so long as everybody was, you know, okay with it. Like maybe that's the thing is that the guys who were having one night stands were just open to that experience. So they were, maybe not so fucking like putting so much pressure on every person they met and seemed to click with. Cause they're like, well, this is going to be whatever it's going to be. Like, this is so stupid. And I think this is, the, this is a misconception. I think about a lot of these younger men who struggle in this area is this idea that they're only doing this cause they're, they're horny and just want to have sex. And it's like, yeah, there is a part of that as, as an adolescent male, but same with me. I, I was just lonely and wanted a girlfriend. And yeah. people, yeah. but people feel that off of you. Yeah. Whereas when you do start to, I'd rather have, date somebody. I'd rather fucking go out with somebody who's horny and wants to get laid than somebody who's like lonely and obsessed with the fact that they're single. The horny person is going to be way more fun to go on a date with, just for <laughs> sure. Like absolutely more fun. <laughs> like if you're attracted to them, well, if it's yeah, someone I, that you're not attracted to and they're horny around you, then it can be off putting. Then I have to put them in horny jail. <laughs> yep. I'm not going to go on a date with somebody. I don't, I'm not at least some like attracted to something about them though. You know? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And it, in the context of a date. Yeah. I thought you just meant hanging out with someone. When you start to get some dates and stuff, you do become a bit more nonchalant. You don't need it to work. And again, paradoxically, things tend to go better then because you're not giving off those kind of needy. It's needy not paradoxically. Vibes, you're not is, putting so much pressure on this other person that you've just been on like two dates with. There's no paradox. People don't like that kind <laughs> of pressure. Yeah. That's why like on my grinder profile, it does not just say looking for relationship. Because I see that, I'm like, uh oh. <laughs> like, there should be other things on. There should be dating, uh, friends, networking. Like, there should be, you know what I mean? Like, you should. What if? What if the date doesn't really work out, and then it's like really funny that your date was kind of tragic, but then that's your best friend a year from now. What the fuck? Like, <laughs> you know? <laughs> like, yeah. 
you know a very unattractive thing i think to both to both sexes yeah i feel like yeah if someone if someone has decided like i have enough friends (laughs) it's like oh i don't think i want to be around you um I've, i've been in situations where somebody's like oh you know i'm not really interested in dating i want to be friends and i'm like well I'm like, I have said like, oh, you know, I, I have plenty of friends. I'm kind of looking for uh, like a partner right now or, or somebody to like kind of you know date or whatever right now. But I'm like, not like, that's kind of rare, but like that's, that's, okay. that's been the case, but you don't, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe that was dickish. Who knows? <laughs> Short story by a writer called Ted Chang recently, where they are able to inject people's brains or whatever, like turn off the receptor that sees beauty to get rid of uh, beauty bias and those kinds of things. And they did it in certain schools, like the high schools you're growing up. And these people didn't know if they were good looking or if their friends were good looking or anything. And you can, when they got to like 18, they had the choice if they wanted to turn it off, and some did. And it was a fascinating idea. Um, do you think that would be good for society or bad for society? Yeah, I mean, it sounds kind of Black Mirror-like. Mm. No, that's that's fascinating. I think um, I, th- I think the, the phrase kind of unplugging from the matrix has become a bit... Um, that's, that's no, 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 that, 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 okay, whatever. Just connotations talk. to it now because someone like Andrew Tate uses the matrix a lot. But I yeah. think um, unplugging from social media a bit, like if you spend a lot of time on platforms like Instagram or again, dating apps, I think you can kind of absorb this idea that everything is about materialism, everything is about these superficial things. Like you have to look a certain way to meet somebody. Uh, you have to have this certain lifestyle, like the Bugattis, or present this certain lifestyle on social media to to meet someone. Otherwise, women are just not going to be interested in you. And it's just these these ten percent of uh, men, you know, clearing up and with these harems and stuff. I think you unplug from that, put yourself out there, uh, and it doesn't have to be like bars and clubs. I I, I use bars and clubs as, as an as an example because I think it's uh it's a that was where I started to work on my social skills when I was younger because there's a lot of people there. Uh, there's a lot of people to, to talk to. They won't remember you um, if, it, if it doesn't go well. If you get rejected, it doesn't matter. No one's going to remember. There are no social repercussions, really. Yeah. Um, as long as you behave you know, respectfully, there's no real social repercussions. Uh, you go, you, and I had like a thing where I'd be like, right, I'm going to go and like try and meet like five new people tonight. I'd like, go out with a friend. We both like didn't like, I hated nightclubs. I hated those kind of places. Felt like I wasn't cool enough to be there. What? Um, but it, but over time, this guy should have gone to a rave instead, man. Everybody's cool enough to be at the fucking rave. That's the point of a rave. <laughs> the rave was literally the alternative to the nightclub. Like when this guy, I, he, his accent leads me to believe he was in like a city in the United Kingdom. And he's probably maybe mid thirties. Man, the underground was huge when he was like in this, this time period. Oh, but if you don't know, you don't go. Oh, oh. <laughs> but like literally this mother these motherfuckers y'all motherfuckers need a rave like random people at a rave i'd be walking around and i didn't have a lighter i'd be walking around with a cigarette in my mouth and i couldn't light it because i like lost my lighter and my bottle of water and i was looking for my friends and shit and just random people would stop me and be like did you know that beautiful people should not light their own cigarettes and then light my cigarette and then just walk off <laughs> like th- these people needed to go to a rave like everyone is beautiful at the rave. That's the point. And it's like such a good environment. And you can actually meet people there. Mind you, a lot of people on a lot of ecstasy. So you shouldn't really take anybody home from a rave, but, and not that I didn't, but you know, not your best, not your best plan, but my God, did these people ever not like, what about a house party? What about like more like intimate I mean, invite only sort of experiences where people are there because they want to be there? There are so many better situations than like a bar and nightclub. Right. And, you know, a lot of like, not to say that if you like the bar and the nightclub, you shouldn't go there. Like, that's fine. If you like those places, go there, have fun, knock yourself out. But like, if that's not your scene, there are like, why go there if you don't like it and go somewhere else, go somewhere you like. What if you, instead of like going to like a bar that's just like a bar with a jukebox, what if you went to a bar that bands played at or DJs played at, or there was like an, like even just like karaoke or trivia or something, you know, there's this bar down in downtown San Diego that has dueling pianos. What a fucking cool experience. And it's not just some like trashy little bar. 
it's like a really nice awesome right. place to be that's what i'm saying you go is, there to have fun and watch the dueling pianos show that's what i'm saying is like you know not all of these uh places are just this sort of cruisy pickup spot i'm so you're way more like like if there's a dance floor you're way more likely to meet somebody if you're out there dancing like because you might just end up dancing <laughs> with somebody and it's not like you know it's not like a fucking the fucking old thing about the school where all the boys were on one side and all the girls were on the other side and you had to walk across <laughs> like it was a like it was a fire pit like going to like <laughs> talk to a girl on the other side like people are dancing there's groups of friends dancing groups of friends will mingle with each other and dance with other groups of friends like if, if you go to a proper nightclub that's the vibe there and it's a little more similar to a rave without it being illegal um and you having to like find out about it but like when this guy's talking about a nightclub, he's talking about like fucking night at the Roxbury, dude. And it's like, that's, they play more than one song at a nightclub, first of all. And there's no douche bigelow, ma male gigolo or whatever at most of these fucking places either. Like the way they talk about like places where alcohol is served is really weird here because there are places where like we were talking about earlier where video games are sort of the center. Uh, you know, we went. When you lived in San Jose, we went to shows. We saw the Ruffies. We saw like Sweet Haya. We saw like our friends' bands play at some of these places. You didn't go as much, but you went to some of these events with us. And like, mm -hmm. yeah, you're way more likely to fucking meet somebody there. You're like, oh, I've never heard this band. You know, you're to the bar and the girl's like, oh, that's my friend. You know, my friend's the fucking bassist. And fucking boom, now you're talking to somebody, aren't you? Almost on accident. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, my God. You kind of become acclimatized to those places. You don't feel like this this weird outsider, um, and your social skills do begin to slowly improve. You realize that it's not necessarily about you know what you look like. It's not necessarily about you know, how much money you've got. It's it's about the kind of vibe. It's, it, that's kind of a woo woo term, but it's kind of about the kind of energy that you have when you're out there, the vibe you have. And I think um, like that. I, I I think kind of once you get in the real world a bit more and get away from this kind of superficial presentation. Like aspect of 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 this stuff so everything everyone on or if you spend a lot of time on instagram it feels like everyone's having more sex than you everyone's have, living this more kind of luxurious lifestyle than you that a lot of those people are hiring out these these uh lambos and yeah. bugattis and getting photos next to them and a lot of this stuff is just just there's so much fakery involved you're taking an intellectual dollar tree photo of you and me in front of like a fucking like a g6 like <laughs> <laughs> There's got to be an airport near near one of us, or somebody's got a private plane that we could take. Like a, uh, it looked like the worst, uh, looked like the worst rap album ever, and and use that as our <laughs> podcast image. Uh, second worst rap album ever, actually. Actually, put things right happen. That last you week. realize actually that stuff is kind of it's not that's not really how the world works. It's 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 the old fashioned ways are still you know mm. the biological th imperative. But we got to be like, like making it rain disaster. with monopoly money in the photo. Somehow we could make it rain with Twitch bits. I don't know how to do that. <laughs> so put yourself out there and you see that it's, it's not always about these superficial things. Do you think it matters if we are having less sex in general? I know population decline might be uh, collapse as an issue. But. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think I think long term it, it clearly does matter if people are having a. Uh oh, less, uh oh. Here children. we go. With, let's go to the birth rates, everybody. This is a this is a, a not unexpected turn, right? Uh, yeah, this is, this is about to get racist. But I think there, there is, there are so many different factors for that. So, I mean, in, in the UK at the moment, it may not, I think this guest here is probably a liberal. You can tell like when he talked about Jordan Peterson, he was like, I don't like his politics. And when he talked about like, <laughs> when he talked about like how he, how to like treat women, he wasn't like, ah. he was like, oh, you got to kind of fucking respect people's boundaries and shit actually. So I don't think this guy's going to go that way. That doesn't mean Andrew Gold's not okay. going to go that way. Yeah, but oftentimes this conversation does go that way where they're they're talking about the declining birth rates of white people and how it's it's a, a supposedly a big deal. Now, I could I, I can't see the future, so this guy could just fuck take that turn. I think one reason friends of mine are having fewer children in my age group, so I'm 41, hmm. um, millennials, like I'm an older millennial, I suppose, but a lot of people in my age group, it feels like uh, having fewer children because- This guy's 41? the cost of living so it's hard to find somewhere stable he to found live. the adrenochrome he looks pretty great for 41 yeah he found the adrenochrome a lot of them are renting <laughs> um a lot of them are having to commute a long time to, to the uh, long distances to the places they work 
Um, and it and it feels like people are putting that on hold till kind of the economic situation. Ah, uh, yeah, people never had anything to do before. That's it. Proves a bit. Um, I think also just yeah, children are hard work. I assume. I mean, I have a cat, and that's hard work. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I think it's. Um, I'll tell your kitty. I said children are hard work. I think maybe we can be a bit more selfish in that respect nowadays a bit more kind of solipsistic so it's a bit more kind of we think about our own like a, fulfill, a bit more narcissistic fulfilling our own goals ambitions and um whereas i think say my grandparents generation it's a bit more like you 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 take you have a child and then to some extent you live vicariously through the child like to, in, to some aspects i think there can be negative connotations to that as well but i think we've kind of gone in a kind of different direction and and now it's about it's more about the self mm -hmm. and people a lot of people don't want to sacrifice any of that to be to be a parent it's all about self-optimization and just pursuing your own kind of ambitions i'd argue that to an extent uh, both of those options you know having children and going about yourself are both selfish endeavors to an extent like they're both uh, aspects of the status game and as you said living vicariously through your children uh i don't i don't know i've tend to, i've noticed that with some friends of mine those who are really ambitious and probably get their status from like look how good my job is or my sport that i play or whatever it might be are delaying having children whereas a lot of people who seem to be um maybe less concerned with that aspect of status jobs and sports and things have children a little younger and then their status their instagram photos and how they're known as like a mother i am now a mother as opposed to the like maybe the woman i knew who was 18 and was excited we had to put a we had to stop this at some point we're up against <laughs> 90 minutes here we're gonna watch the rest of this during the post game i'm actually kind of surprised by his guest in a lot of ways here i'm gonna be honest yeah um uh, a lot of good advice not all of it good uh you know some advice he gave was uh questionable and sometimes he would talk about things where you you can tell like he's kind of still framing things in that manosphere view um even though like he's supposedly knowledgeable enough about it that he's writing a book on the manosphere so yeah uh but i i do think that uh a lot of these young men who have these toxic views would benefit from hearing a lot of the stuff that he said Right, and it'd be interesting to hear him talk to maybe a feminist. Uh, you know what I'm saying? To see yeah. like if somebody else is driving the conversation, if like what he says is like even more um, useful and like kind, I suppose. Because that's the certain, it's the big old thing. Matt lacking in the manosphere is kindness. They're not being kind to each yeah. other. They're not being kind to women. And I don't know, maybe they're not even being kind to their own fucking family. I, I don't fucking know. Like Stefan Molyneux tells you to get rid of your family if they don't like what Ste if he doesn't like what Stefan Molyneux has to say. But also, like, I don't know, I'd be curious. Maybe we can um, add this guy to our cast of characters sort of temporarily and uh, check out some more of his content like during the post game next week or something just to kind of see yeah. where he's at and who else he's talking to, right? Because if he's talking to, you know, if you, it just, like, if you see him, like, is he talking to Jordan Peterson or is he talking to like, is he talking to any women? Is he going on any podcasts with any women? Like it just, it would, his, the diet of who is interviewing him would tell me more about him. Unless he's yeah. going specifically into these spaces with these ideas to sort of disrupt some of the shit that, that we talk about more broadly with the manosphere. And that would be a mm -hmm. pretty fucking cool mission to be on actually. Yeah then that would make me a lot more of a fan than, uh, you know, if he ended up agreeing with a lot of these, uh, like, Manosphere guys. Well, well, we'll try to remember to keep an eye on this guy, and we're going to definitely watch the rest of this video during the post game. Uh, HK, you mind uh, reading the show out? Yep. Uh, thank you for watching. The Intellectual Dollar Tree would do the show every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Pacific right here on twitch.tv slash echoplex media. If you'd like to check out any of our other shows, you can do that at echoplex.com. And if you're if you're listening live, stick around after the song for Red Light. Uh, and uh, the song is Boomers by Periscope. Here we go.
Every Saturday is Cat Day on Echoplex Media, and not only are we posting fucking cats, we invite all content creators to join our open panel. Visit echoplexmedia.com slash panel to learn how to join. Every third Saturday is Operation Catter Day, where we cover this week and last year and play the best clips from the cast of conspiracy characters that Now Space has learned to loathe. The show starts at 8 p.m. Pacific at twitch.tv slash echoplexmedia. Find our full schedule at echoplexmedia.com.